بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. So we're continuing with the names of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Today we're taking a look at the name of Allah المهيمن. المهيمن can be translated as the guardian. If you want to go into a little more detail, <coughs> المهيمن is the one who watches and takes care of his creation, the one who witnesses and records their actions, the one who protects, who, the one whose protection is sought by his righteous servants, and ultimately the one to trust. Now, there is a difference regarding the root verb. Um, some scholars will say that muhaymin comes from haymana yuhayminu haymana tan fahuwa muhayminun, which the verb itself means to watch over, to witness, as in to affirm what happened, uh, to guard, to supervise, and to control. However, there is an uh, opinion about how, where it came from, that, uh, you know, amina means to be safe, and amana, uh, yu'atminu, mu'atmanatan, fahuwa mu'atminun means uh, to give somebody protection. And then, so because there's two alifs back to back, uh, this happens often in Arabic where words will over time become sort of morphed. And so the hypothesis is that the, first, the second hamza turned into a ya, making it aymana, uh, yu'ayminu, mu'aymanatan, fahuwa mu'ayminun. And then finally, the first hamza became a ha, and hence becoming muhaymin or uh, yeah, exactly. So this is the, 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 the way it transformed over time, and this is just a hypothesis, Allah knows best, but still the meaning is the same. Now, interestingly, this um, name of Allah occurs twice in the Qur'an. You find the word muhaymin referring to Allah twice, and then one time you find it referring to the Qur'an. Very, very interesting. So let's take a look at this. As for the times that this, this word muhaymin is referring to Allah Ta'ala as the name of Allah, we see in Surah Al-Hashr. Ayah number 23, the very famous ayah which lists the name of Allah. Allah says, هُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّهُ الْمَلِكَ الْقُدُّسَ السَّلَامَ الْمُؤْمِنَ الْمُهَيْمِنَ الْعَزِيزِ So you find that here Allah is listing His names and attributes and Al-Muhaymin is mentioned before it is Al-Mu'min and after it is Al-Aziz. So Ibn Ashur, he makes a comment about the name of Allah Al-Mu'min saying that it is, you know, meaning the grantor of security, is followed by Al-Muhaymin, the observer, uh, the, observing gar uh, the observing guardian. Uh, why? To emphasize that Allah's security is resulting from his perfect knowledge. In other words, I grant perfect security and I'm overseeing everything. I'm not granting security based on ignorance, therefore it won't fail in terms of a failure of information. No, rather this security is being uh, granted based on perfect knowledge, wisdom, and power over all circumstances. And, you know, we find many ayat that emphasize this point that Allah Ta'ala is watching over everyone, whether they're good or bad. For example, Allah says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُوا الظَّالِمِينَ And never think that Allah is unaware of what the wrongdoers are doing. So, again, you find this idea that Allah Ta'ala is observing everything. Furthermore, we know in the story of Musa and Khidr, alayhim salam Allah mentions what? وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّهُمَا وَيَسْتَخْرِجَ كَنْزَهُمَا رَحْمَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكَ That Allah Ta'ala says, that because he was an overseer and an overwatcher, Allah Ta'ala is mentioning what? That their father had been righteous in the past, talking about these two orphans, their father from long ago who had, was gone was a righteous person, so your Lord intended that they reach maturity and extract their treasure as a mercy from your Lord. So SubhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala is emphasizing that, look, I see the whole big picture and I know how to dispense of my mercy in the best of ways. Now, that's in regards to, you know, you have Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Aziz. The name Al-Muhaymin is followed by Al-Aziz, the Almighty, to confirm that Allah's protection cannot be overpowered by anything. So, this is the name of Allah mentioned Al-Muhaymin in Surah Al-Hashr. What about um, a second time you find that this is being mentioned, excuse me, it's only mentioned twice, one time as the name of Allah and one time as the name uh, uh, describing the Qur'an. Excuse me, I said that incorrectly. So now regarding uh, the mention of Al-Muhaymin, the use of the word Al-Muhaymin as the Qur'an, Allah says what? وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمُهَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ Very, very interesting ayah. Allah says what? And we have revealed to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu <clears throat> the book in truth, confirming that which preceded it of the scripture and as a criterion over it. So Allah Ta'ala is saying, look, there were previous scriptures of the past, whether we're talking about a Torah, the Torah, Al-Injil, the gospel, uh, from Musa salam, and Isa salam, respectively. And Allah is saying that now this Qur'an is coming, confirming that which preceded it of the scripture, and it's a criterion, it's a muhaymin. You could say it's this overwatcher, this overseer, this protector. How, how therefore, is it a muhaymin al-alayh? How is it a muhaymin? 
So what is this referring to? Number one, it could be referring to the fact that the Qur'an is a confirmation of what the past scriptures taught. It's preserving their message uh, that the past prophets received and confirming their miracles, making sure that these are not just forgotten in history, rather they are indeed true. And to be a miracle itself, as the Qur'an is, and attesting and witnessing to the truth. So that is one meaning here of the fact that the Qur'an is muhaymin. Now, a second meaning, is that the Qur'an is being a protector or a clarifier. It is clarifying whatever distortions and lies the people of the book had inserted into their books. So Allah Ta'ala had uh, sent them revelation. Unfortunately, not only did they misinterpret it, but they also uh, changed it and you know, did tahrif, which is you know, to add additions and sub subtractions and distortions. And so this Qur'an is coming to uh, preserve and maintain whatever was true from those past scriptures, but also to clarify whatever has been distorted. Allah Ta'ala says about the um, consistency of the messengers, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاهُوتِ that, And we have certainly sent to, into every nation a messenger saying, worship Allah and avoid Tahut. So this is a statement of Allah Ta'ala saying, look, we every messenger taught the same thing. So if, if past nations lied about their messengers, all of that is false. They all taught to worship one God and to avoid uh, Tahut. The third uh, interpretation is that this is a reference to the fact that the Qur'an is now abrogating. It is abrogating it's becoming an abrogation superseding past scriptures because their guidance in, in terms of their fiqh and their spe specific details regarding fiqh, all that was for their context. So now you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying what? That this Qur'an is for the context of now till the end of time. So therefore it is going to supersede it and abrogate uh, the, um, uh, the, the law, the laws of past nations. Now of course we don't believe that major beliefs change obviously whether it be from the time of Adam salam, onwards to the Prophet Muhammad salam, the major concepts of God being one, the fact that there's a judgment day, you know, be a good person, speak the truth, these things always stay the same. But you know, sometimes based on circumstance, a few aspects of law may change. And so this is what we believe about the Quran, that yes, it could be the case that a few aspects of law uh, have now been updated for that, for our current context. And so therefore that makes the Quran an abrogation to that which is before it. Number four is that, since Allah Ta'ala is addressing the Prophet ﷺ, in this verse, Allah Ta'ala is speaking to his messenger, it could be that Allah is actually telling the Prophet ﷺ that he is in the state, or he's in the hal, you could say, of being muhaymin, the confirmation, or the clarifier, or the protector, alayhi, over the Qur'an. Uh, in other words, he's entrusted to convey it. And so this in and of itself is a very um, deep concept, and it really should uh, have an impact on the individual when they read it, because that means that Allah is telling his messenger, it's your job to convey this message and to protect it and to preserve it in your behavior. You have to live by it. You have to show people what this Qur'an is all about. So what is the lesson here? The lesson is that Allah chose the Prophet ﷺ to convey this Qur'an to the Sahaba. Of course, the Sahaba, it was their job to, con uh, and they had the honor of conveying it and delivering it to the Tabi'een, the next generation. And this continued generation after generation, the Qur'an was continuously taught, not just through word, but through action uh, until today. And so that means that we are all the recipients alive today, receiving the Qur'an from the culmination of all these past nations. So the big question is, will Allah Ta'ala use you and I to be the muhaymin, to be the defender, the protector, the clarifier, the living witness of this Qur'an for the next generation. The Prophet ﷺ tells us what? خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ This is really, you know, emphasizing the point that the Prophet ﷺ says, Sahih Bukhari, authentic hadith, the best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. So may Allah Ta'ala make us of those who can be a conveyor of this Qur'an. Now, what effect does this name of Allah, al muhaymin have upon the believer? There are a number of points. I'd just like to mention a few. Number one, we have a duty to watch over and protect the Ummah. We know that Allah is the ultimate al muhaymin the ultimate guardian, the one who is overwatching and protecting this Ummah. We should feel a sense of obligation and, and responsibility to also, to whatever extent we can, of course, uh, try to take care of this Ummah. The Prophet has a very interesting statement in Adab al-Mufrad, um, the Prophet says, المؤمن الذي يخالط الناس ويصبر على أذاهم خير من الذي لا يخالط الناس ولا يصبر على أذاهم That the believer who mixes with the people and injures their harm is better than the person who does not mix with the people and nor does he injure their harm. So what is this statement saying? The statement is saying, yes, some people might be tempted and say, I'm going to break away from humanity. I'm going to live, you know, like a... 
a hermit or something. I'm just going to worship my Lord and only focus on me because that's the best way that I can protect my faith. And as noble as that might sound initially, the fact of the matter is it's even better to deal with people, deal with their frustration, and ultimately try to um, improve the situation. Uh, this is obviously a sense of responsibility for the ummah. Point number two is what? We need to develop a sense of muraqabah, uh, which means that you feel like Allah Ta'ala is watching you. We know that the Prophet mentioned in the Hadith Jibreel, very famous Hadith, uh, where, the, where Jibreel السلام, explained what is Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. Specifically when defining Ihsan or excellence, Jibreel السلام, told the Prophet السلام, أَن تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ That Ihsan or excellence is that you worship Allah as if you are seeing Him. Uh, for though you do not see Him, verily He sees you. So, actually I should say, I think I said that backwards. That Jibreel asked the question and this is what the Prophet ﷺ explained to him. I think I said that uh, in verse. But anyhow, the point being what? That you're supposed to worship Allah Ta'ala knowing that He sees you, having a sense that He is watching you to the point that you feel like you can see Allah Ta'ala directly. So, this can be interpreted, this hadith can be interpreted in multiple ways. The idea is that when you're looking at creation, you have this sense of mushahada, witnessing that, yes, I'm looking at the creation of Allah, so even the creation has the impact as if I'm watching and seeing the Creator. And another interpretation is that you, when you're worshiping Allah, not just looking at creation, but when you're actually worshiping, you have that sense that Allah Ta'ala is watching you. Another way of looking at this hadith about uh, this hadith Jibreel is that when you do something good, uh, it's as if you're seeing Allah, it's as if you're seeing your goal right in front of you and you're doing those actions as sincerely as possible with sincere love. And when you are tempted by evil, we all have moments of good and evil, when you are tempted by evil, then you remember uh, uh, that Allah is seeing you. So this, this, this combination of you see him and he sees you, it's like, okay, when you're doing good, it's as if you see him. When you're doing evil, remember he sees you. So subhanAllah, that's sort of the exchange going on and Allah knows best. Furthermore, we should remember that the Prophet says what? إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَجَاوَزَ عَنْ أُمَّةِ مَا حَدَّثَتْ بِهِ أَنفُسَهَا مَا لَمْ تَعْمَلْ عَلَىٰ أَوْ تَتَكَلَمْ That Allah has forgiven my followers the evil thoughts that occur to the mind as long as such thoughts are not put into action or spoken. So Allah Ta'ala is watching you. Allah Ta'ala is Al-Muhaymin. Allah is the guardian over you. And yes, He sees everything you do and He knows everything that you're thinking and feeling. But you are not accountable for negative thoughts and ideas. Just do your best to never voice them, talk about them, and uh, you know, act upon them. A few final points is that, of course, Allah Ta'ala is Al-Muhaymin, the guardian, therefore he should be trusted. The Prophet gave the advice to Ibn Abbas, Ihfadillah yahfadk, that uh, be mindful of Allah and he's gonna protect you. Ihfadillah tajidhu tujahak, that be mindful of Allah and you're gonna find him in front of you. Ida sa'alta fas'alillah wa ida sta'anta when you ask, ask of Allah, and when you take refuge or ask for help and need help, then seek help from Allah Ta'ala. And of course, there are many different ayat that emphasize the point of trusting Allah. To the point, for example, the believers, even in the worst of circumstances, Allah records and mentions the state of the Sahaba when they knew that an army was coming. And when the believers saw the companies, these, all these different delegates, all the different disbelievers coming and getting them to attack them, they said, this is what Allah and His Messenger had promised, promised us, and Allah and His Messenger spoke the truth. And it only increased them in faith and acceptance. SubhanAllah. This is a true uh, state of recognizing Allah as Al-Muhaymin. I trust whatever Allah Ta'ala is going to be giving. And we know that the Prophet uh, you know, um, demonstrated and um, embodied this aspect in the hadith mentioned by Jabir ibn Abdullah where he specifically talks about how the Prophet once was with uh, the Sahaba, they all fell asleep and rested, took some shade under some trees and so forth and then one person, like a spy, came in, took a sword and then put the sword to the Prophet and said, uh, uh, he said to him, uh, من يمنعك مني, who's going to protect you from me? So the Prophet said, what? Allah. And then he asked again the same question, well, who's going to protect you from, from me? Holding the sword to the Prophet ﷺ while the Prophet ﷺ was down and uh, without any protection. And then he said again, Allah. And then, فَشَامَ السَّيْفِ فَهَا هُوَ ذَا جَالِسٌ That the sword, he fell from his hand and now I got it and now he is sitting here. He's in my um, custody, you could say. And the final point that I want to mention, and this I think is maybe one of the most important points for us to remember, is that we want to be an ambassador of the Qur'an. 
we want to make sure that we are those protectors. We are the ones living by and teaching the Quran. Ibn Taymiyyah reported by uh, that Abu Abdurrahman al-Sulami, he said, حدثنا الذين كانوا يقرؤوننا القرآن كعثمان ibn Affan wa Abdullah ibn Mas'ud wa غيرهما those who used to teach us the Qur'an, like Uthman ibn Affan, like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and others, they used to, they told us what? أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا إِذَا تَعَلَّمُوا مِنَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم عشر آيات لم يجاوزوها حتى يتعلموا ما فيها من العلم والعمل That uh, they told us that they'd learn only 10 ayat of the Qur'an from the Prophet وسلم, and they wouldn't go beyond it until what? Until they learned what's in it from knowledge and action. In other words, it wasn't just memorize, 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 and just go as fast as possible. What does it mean? I don't know. How do you apply it? I don't know. The Sahaba, subhanAllah, patient, memorizing 10 ayat. We're not going to go past until I understand every word in here, the application of it, how I can, how I can start living by it. SubhanAllah, may Allah Ta'ala make us of the type of people who take the Qur'an seriously. So what should we do? We want to read and memorize and apply and teach and live by the Qur'an, just as this Qur'an is a muhaymin, a protection of the truth, so too, you and I, inshallah ta'ala, will become a protector of the truth, attesting to what is right and rebuking what is wrong, uh, like a light in the darkness wherever you go. So may Allah ta'ala make us this protector of the truth. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And inshallah ta'ala, with that we close. Barakallah feekum, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.